Hi and welcome to this demo which is about ONOS or Open Network Operating System. ONOS is a SDN controller with uh, lots of good features for service providers. It's a mature product and it's created and managed by ONF or Open Networking Foundation. Uh, ONF is also part of the Linux Foundation. Uh, ONF is uh, maintaining and managing the ONOS. Also, they have other uh, interesting projects like uh, similar like project court uh, or OTDN or other project which they have for the for the networking like trellis and some some few others so in this video we will just do a demo of uh, onos to give you the the feeling of how the onos works and how you can do the testing with with onos so when we browse to the onosproject.org, uh, from here we can jump into the downloads, the download section. Uh, from from download section, uh, you know, it, it is packaged as source code. Also, you know, there are packages like a zip package or RPM package. Also, it comes as a Docker image. So you can just download the Docker image and run it as Docker. Or you know it can be run as uh, as just a zip file. You know you can extract the zip file in your uh, preferred operating system in a preferred Linux flavor, and you can run it from there. Uh, the official releases, you know, the latest version is Peacock, and you know you can just download the tar the tar file, and it can be built. Uh, uh, it, you can just run it uh, inside uh, in a uh in a centos or you know any other uh uh linux flavor now for standard installation of onos on, on a single machine um they have there is a tutorial in in open networking project in the documentation you know installation on the single machine which is a very simple steps for you know creating a folder downloading the zip file uh the archive file from uh from the owners project and you know extracting it and just running running the owner service so actually the owner service here is exactly you know it's just apache craft and uh if you remember you know when we were talking about open daylight which was also using the apache craft owners also is using the same architecture using the apache craft for uh, for launching, uh, for managing the, the, the ONOS. So both, both ONOS and Open Daylight, they have somehow similar architecture. But however, you know, for this example, uh, for, for today demo, we don't uh, do, the, do the installation here. I mean, we can do just uh, download the, the, the zip file and extract it on the machine. And you can, uh, once you start the ONOS service uh, after the Apache Craft comes up, uh, you will get the web interface enabled on port number 8181 and you can just uh, access the web interface of the ONOS. It's not like Open Daylight that, you know, you have to install and activate the the, the web user interface like Deluxe, you know, separately. Uh, so everything just works, you know, after executing this command. Um, but ONOS has got something very nice. It's a complete tutorial for uh for for doing the demo so uh for this onos tutorial which is available here if you go to the wiki page of the onos you know basic uh, onos tutorial uh from here uh it has a section for downloading a complete uh, virtual machine virtual image the onos tutorial ova file and you can just load this ova file in your uh, preferred hypervisor, mm -hmm. either VMware, Zen, or KVM, or VirtualBox. Uh, probably, I think it will work better with VirtualBox because it got some uh, some specific probably drivers for the VirtualBox. When you start this uh, this VM, it has some built-in uh, pre pre-compiled you know drivers for the VirtualBox. Uh, so you can just download this uh, uh, this file. Uh, if I click here, it just goes to the Google Drive, and from here you can download that file. It's around three, three point three point eight gigabytes, uh, and you can load it on your uh, on your virtual environment. So once you load this uh, uh, this OVA file in your virtual box or anything any other uh, hypervisor, you can start that virtual machine and 
we will have the demo. So here in our example, I have uh, I have downloaded this image file and I have loaded on uh, here. Uh, so I I'm using uh, Zen. So I have loaded on the inside the Zen instead of uh, anything else. You know I have I'm using this uh, Open Zen. So I have loaded uh, uh, the same OVA file inside my inside my Zen server uh, using this uh, Open Zen Manager. You can, if you are using Windows, you can use the uh, Zen uh, Management Console Management GUI. Uh, so this uh, ONS tutorial virtual machine uh, by default, I think it comes with four gigabyte of memory and I think two, or I think four virtual CPUs. I highly recommend you to increase the memory uh, for for this virtual machine. So I have changed it to 16 gigabytes. Uh, probably it will work with eight, uh, but with four gigabytes, you know, you, you may feel that you know, it's working really slow. Uh, so once you start this virtual machine, uh, you will get uh, the console, you know, similar similar to this. You know, it's just, yeah, it prompts you for, for username and password. Uh, the default password for Onos is rocks, R-O-C-K-S. And after that, you know, you will get into the uh, into the GUI. Uh, it's a XFCE desktop on top of the Ubuntu, I think, version 14. Now here in this one, I have actually installed uh, uh, a VNC server. So we will be connecting to, to this machine through the VNC for better visuals because I got some problem actually here with, uh, with screen resolutions. Uh, so let's try and get that uh, connected. So here is our our screen. So after booting that virtual machine, uh, the Onos uh, tutorial, we get this uh, home screen. So the first step is to uh, click here and uh, set up the Onos cluster. So this is script, which is coming by default, uh, pre-built inside this virtual machine actually it creates uh, four uh, docker containers uh, so first it tries to destroy them and then it creates them again so it creates a cluster of three Onos uh, servers so Onos works very well with clustering and uh, it requires uh, an odd number of the servers in a cluster so uh, so, for example, here, uh, you know, it creates f three servers. So the three server is the odd number. So it works with that. And after that, so let's give it a little bit of time for uh, startup here. Actually, it's a good, good idea. We, we create another shell here and we just do a H talk to see what's going on on the system. So this machine, as I said, you know, it has 16 gigabyte of memory, six CPUs. Uh, right now, the uh, that script is creating the uh, is generating the uh, the Onos Docker uh, containers. Uh, here in the desktop, as you can see, we got uh, something called Onus GUI. So this one is a URL to. Um, to the GUI of the of the Onos, actually, it calls to the uh, to the Docker NATed IP address and port, which is being forwarded to to those one of those Docker containers, which is presenting the serving the uh, the Onos graphical user interface. And uh, we got uh, these ones are the topology so actually they are script mininet scripts which are creating a topology for uh for mininet and it connects those topologies to the uh to the onos so for this setup uh once we have the onos running after that we will get to our the get to the web interface uh we test the web interface and after that we will start deploying one of these scenarios the spine lift te technology topology and we see how uh those open flow switches within the meaning that how they will communicate to the onos and we will have also some hosts which will enable uh them to be able to communicate with each other okay so let's give it some time let it come up now Okay, so as you can see now, we got the Onos logo here and we got the Onos prompt here after we started the Onos cluster. 
Uh, so after setting up all of these three nodes, waited for the three nodes to get started. And then after that, it has activated OpenFlow pro proxy ARP applications, OpenFlow proxy ARP, and uh, the layout application. So these are all, uh, you know, the ONOS applications, the modules, which are already in the ONOS, but it requires to be activated. So it's very similar, again, back to the Open Daylight, where we uh, activated those features, you know, using the feature command in Open Daylight. So here also we have to activate the, the ONOS applications. So let's try now to uh, get access to the um, uh, to the GUI of the ONOS. If you double click here, it launches the uh, the Chrome, and here we got so it's try it's access to 172.17.0.5. So this is a Docker IP address within this host. Uh, if I look here, uh, if I go to the networking here, here we go. You know, there are lots of, of this network has been created. So these are all the, 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 the Docker uh, networkings uh, which has been created. Uh, so this 172.17.0.5 on port 8181, this is actually mapped to that particular uh, Docker container which is running inside this host. So the username here is Onos and the password is rocks, R-O-C-K-S. And after login, we get uh, the first dashboard. So you can see that the dashboard, the graphical user interface is pretty much mature. It shows the version of the, of the Onos running here and we have three nodes. Uh, the three nodes, 172.17.05, 06 and 07. So these are the three servers we have in this cluster. Uh, if you click on the left side, these are uh, the options for, for ONOS. Uh, so you have applications where you can see what are the available applications and which ones are being activated. So the ones with the green tick here, they are already activated applications. So uh, for example, we got BGP, BGP, PSAP uh, application, which are not activated. We got application for core, for project core. We got application for drivers of Siena. These are I think it's a, it should be a, a optical networking probably uh, drivers because Onos is very wide. You know, it can control um, not only the virtual switches and you know open flow devices. It can also control uh, the other type of devices like open source. Uh, sorry, it's software defined optical networking or. Uh, the ODLs, uh, you know, the, all of these devices can be controlled by uh, by Onos. Also, it got some uh, support. If you look at the website, you can find out lots of good information about how to use Onos to control uh, data plane and use uh, P4 is to do some integration with P4 language for data plane programming. Uh, so we got applications, you know, these are the basic settings and it shows the setting information, the, the variables and topologies where uh, we are going from here. So right now we don't have any uh, switch or any device connected to our to our topology. So uh, now we will go to the desktop and we will run this example, the spine leaf topology. So let's execute these. And as you can see, uh, it's calling the famous Mininet. It is creating some hosts, which are uh, starting from 11 to 45. It created one, two, three, four, five, six switches. So two spine switches and four leaf switches, a spine and leaf topology. And it created all of the links between the switches. Uh, here also it is sending gratitude ARP uh, from each host. So hosts are sending some ARP messages to the switches. And when the switches are receiving those ARPs, since these switches are all open flow switches, they send these uh, messages or those ARP packets encapsulated as an open flow message, they will send it to the to owners. So owners should be able to know that, you know, what are the switches and also what are the hosts. Okay, now if we go back to the uh, here, and now we got these few switches also already. Uh, it has a feature also if I press 
L, you know, it can give me the friendly names of these switches. So we got these two spine switches and we have these leaf switches here. So I can put them uh, in this way. So this is similar like, uh, you know, for example, you have four racks and these are the top of the rack switches, top of the rack leaf switches where all of your servers are connecting to. And these two are the spine switches. Or you can say that this is my services um, switch here where my uh, the BGP router and the connectivity to the outside or the van connection, internet connection are coming. And these are my top of the rack switches. So anyway, just the leaf switch, we keep it here. Uh, if I press H, it will show also the host. So you can enable or disable the host. So it shows the host with the IP address. So as you can see, we got one, two, three, four, four hosts connected to um, to these devices, or actually more. You know, it's not very, uh, it's not very similar to you know what what's there you know it, it looks like there are some hosts also connected to the spine switch and this one this leaf switch has more hosts connected to it uh, so these ip addresses are coming from um, those packets the r packets which was generated so the host when the host is sending the arp the proxy uh, the gratitude arp uh, the leaf switch picks up that uh, packet and sends it to the owner. So owners from that packet, uh, it will understand that, hey, there is a host with this particular IP address 10.0013 is connected to, let's say, port number one of the leaf switch three, for example. Uh, can do uh, press L, you know, it shows a uh, bit uh, uh, the MAC address. Of the, of the devices. Now, uh, let's see if we can do, uh, if we can ping between between these hosts. Uh, if we go back to the, if we go back to the mininets, if you remember, remember, uh, we can do a pinging. Let's ping from host one to host two, from host 11 to host 12. So we can, in mininet, we can say host 11, ping to host 12 uh, so which trying to uh, send ping packets to 10.0.0.2 which is the host 2 from the host number 1 uh, which looks like it's not working so um, but the reason that it's not working is because we don't have uh, the layer 2 switch application you know, you know inside the owners right now so if you remember uh, back in the open daylight, uh, we had to install the, the layer two switch application. So layer two switch application, it had this function to learn the MAC addresses and install the flows inside those, inside the, these virtual switches. So here in Onos also, we have the same situation. Uh, right now we don't have any uh, layer two switch or forwarding activated right now. So for that reason, you know, the, the ping is not working here. So we can install that application or that feature in Onos. You know, we can do it from the uh, here from the command prompt. So let's do that now. All right. So here in Onos, instead of that mm, feature command, we still have the feature, but uh, the, we will use some 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 command called app. So if I say app dash s dash a, sorry, apps. Uh, so this command shows uh, the currently activated and installed application. So for example, optical model, the LLDP, you know, drivers, open flow, for example, these are the proxy arb, these are all activated. So there is an app called, um, so we need to app uh, activate. So app activate uh, org dot onos project dot fwd. So this is that, you know, forwarding or that layer two, you know, kind of switching uh, application in onos. Uh, so in, in open daylight, you know, we use the feature install, you know, 
you know th that layer two switch here we have to say app activate you know this particular application so now after activating this if we go back to mininet we try to ping h1 to h2 let's see is it going to work or not not yet let's try between host uh, one and host four not yet it may need to get to, to give it some time because uh, this machine doesn't have that much processing power okay so let's have a look at our web interface okay so now you can see there are flows being installed so because of the you know we have so many hosts here uh, the ONOS is busy installing the flows inside inside the network so let's do a refresh also so till now we got 27 flows and let's see if there is anything being changed okay so now the, the number of flows uh, installed is 32 we get it back to 17 27 okay so now we got 40 flows installed keep increasing let me try again to do h11 ping to h12 uh, yeah it's pinging now so it takes some time because we have so many flows uh, between all of these hosts uh, you know it's just it, it's a lot of them you know it's keep uh, keep changing so this is how you know we can do uh, the open flow and uh, installation of the flows inside inside the switches so instead of again these switches we can have uh, the hardware switches which are compatible with open flow and you know owners will be able to control uh, all of those uh, those switches now if i go to the application let's see if that new application which we activated is showing with uh, with green tick so the application which we activated was it was FWD, if you search it, yeah. So reactive forwarding uh, FWD that is already enabled now. So it's called reactive forwarding because uh, it looks at the packet. So when a packet arrives, uh, the switch key sends it uh, to the STN controller. STN controller will react on that packet. And that message, it finds the destination and injects the flow inside uh, inside the relevant uh, switches in the path so inside the source switch and also all the switches in the path that are required to have a flow uh, inside their flow table uh, other than that you know you know as you can see it's a pretty much nice you know great user interface you know you can you can have a go uh, with uh, uh, with this nice uh, you know combined demo which is provided by by Onos and also you can you can stop the mini net from here and you can go for the other demos which is which it has so this one is very massive the uh we can, you can run the other ones also it creates many number of those switches and you know it may load the uh the owners very hard uh let's see for example this one what kind of topology is going to generate so it has 25 switches for example it's a massive topology for for this small virtual machine to handle uh but let's see uh, okay you know, we go to topology and it hasn't loaded yet it will be a lot of device okay slowly it's loading it so this is the us uh, mpls network uh, uh created by uh, that topology so it has all of the host names and the number of links between them you know Phoenix uh, this is the Los Angeles and uh, Dallas Orlando then should be one of the might be a service provider or just a uh, just a network which they they put it there um, so this was about you know just a very basic demo to give you the look and feel how the STN controller works, the ONOS STN controller works, how you can set it up. And you know, feel free to you know play with, with ONOS if you are interested. And if you have any question, please uh, feel free to write those questions in the forum or you can contact me directly. Uh, thank you very much.